is Vallejo's second wave of express colors the game changer in the world of one coat paints or should you stick with your trusted contrast and speed paints? To find out, I put all 36 new colors from wave 2 to the test, including the 8 brand new higher pigmented intense paints. I'm Starly from Tale of Painters and in this video review we'll find out if Vallejo is ready to beat the competition or not. The Spanish paint manufacturer Vallejo took a relatively long time to introduce the competing product to Siddle Contrast and the Army Painter Speed Paints. Wave 1 is still somewhat hard to come by, especially in the US, but now we are treated with Wave 2, which brings 36 new colors developed in collaboration with painting legend Angel Geraldes and contrast expert Juan Hidalgo. Among these are 8 colors specifically designed for military uniforms, as well as 8 highly pigmented intense colors, more about both in a moment. Now, on my channel you can already find a detailed review of the first wave, covering all the basic features of express colors, so I recommend giving it a watch, but here's a brief summary of my experiences. I found that express colors require to be shaken vigorously, but then they apply very smoothly and evenly, dry very matte and do not reactivate once dry. However, compared to their contrast and speed paint counterparts, many colors tend to be slightly less pigmented. This often means you need to apply two coats to achieve a similarly intense result as with the single coat of contrast or speed paint. Let me know in the comments about your experiences with express color and tell me if you've observed the same. For the classic contrast painting method over a white or light primer, I have to admit I've mostly stuck with contrast and speed paint. However, for slap chop or sandal priming techniques, the weaker pigmentation of express colors can actually turn into a strength as it allows more of the pre-shading to show through. I used express colors on my Blood Bowl Shambling Under team, which you can see here. I started with a dark brown base coat, then created a gradient by airbrushing highlights in light bone colors, then gently dry brush the edges with white. Now, for the black belts and crimson armor, I had to apply two coats of black lotus and velvet dress express color, as I wanted a really strong tint. I also refined the belt and armor with additional edge highlights, in case you're wondering. But for the red clothes, I applied only one layer of plasma red over the sandal base coat, and the result was super smooth. I added a few edge highlights with white rider red sparingly, but the clothes looked great even without the additional highlight. By the way, you can find a detailed tutorial for the undead on my Patreon if you're interested in recreating the scheme. Now, with Wave 2, Vallejo has responded to the feedback and introduced 8 new extra pigmented intense colors. I'll provide my assessment of those shortly, but before we dive into the details, let's explore all 36 new colors. Expanding the primary colors, there's a new orange that is a bit warmer and more yellowish than Martian orange from Wave 1, a pink, twilight rose, which is a muted warm burgundy purple, a new vibrant lilac, and wicked purple, which is actually more blackish than purple. For this comparison, I painted all colors over a white primer and photographed them professionally under neutral 5500K light and below each I put the closest shade from the contrast and speed paint range for your reference. There's also a new denim blue, a warm medium green, as well as an ochre green, perfect for Nurgle tainted flesh. Mummy White is a light brown wash that can produce a nice off-white when painted over white primer. It's actually one of my favorites from the new wave. And then Bag of Bones finally adds a bone color to the range. In terms of skin tones, there's now more variety too. We have a rosy skin tone with fairy skin, a pale brownish grayish tone with zombie flesh, which is another of my favorites. A wicked reddish tone with demonic skin, which is also perfect for shading red. A new tanned skin tone and a dark warm tone with mahogany. In wave 1, darker browns were missing and now we've got some new ones to the range. The warm muddy ground and the more neutral willow bark. Additionally, there's greasy black, an anthracite color, which works great for weathering and metals when thinned down a bit. As for more grey tones, we have Starship Steel, a petrol grey similar to Griff Charger grey from Citadel, and Iceberg grey, a muted bluish grey. Let's now take a look at the 8 military colors. These have been specifically developed to meet the needs of historical painters, but are also perfect for Imperial Guard armies. We have khaki drills, a warm khaki for desert warfare, and also matching the undergarments of Cadian shock troops. 
military yellow, which is a yellowish brown, a warm ochre tone, and a muted yellowish brown with battle dress brown. For the green tones, we have two ochre greens for the US forces, a dark muted green, which Juan Hidalgo has tailored to resemble the green armor of the box art Cadians, and Lancer Grey, a dark grey green matching the uniforms of the German army in World War II. Now it's time to talk about the eight new intense colors. These are highly pigmented and create a much stronger tint, though they also seem to contain more opaque pigments than regular express colors. This means that when you're using slap chop or central base coating, they can cover up the pre-shading to a certain extent. With contrast and speed paint, some colors also contain opaque white pigment, but they are usually found in the lighter and more pastel shades. The Intense subrange has a total of 8 colors, and as you can see, these are clearly inspired by some of the most popular Space Marine chapters. There's a new yellow, although I think it's quite similar to Nuclear Yellow from Wave 1. A more intense orange, which is quite similar to Magma Draw Flame from the Contrast range. A deep, warm red, and a dark black that strongly resembles Citadel's Black Legion. Unlike Black Lotus from Wave 1, which was more of a dark blue-gray, Hospitaler Black is a completely neutral black. In the blue and green tones, we have Viking Gray, a deep ultramarine blue, a muted turquoise, which is a great starting point for contrast style Sons of Horrors, and a dark green, which I also really like. And here, I've put all 60 colors from Wave 1 and Wave 2 into a single chart. The expanded express color range is still smaller than the contrast and speed paint ranges, but now it feels much more complete than before, covering both vibrant and earthy tones. You can download this chart for free on my website taleofpainters.com, I've put a link in the video description below, and if you find this helpful, then please like this video and subscribe to my channel, there'll be plenty more paint reviews coming, like the new War Paints Fanatic range from the Army Painter. Thanks a lot and now... Returning to the question from the beginning of the video, can Vallejo outperform contrast and speed paint with their second wave? The good news is that if you like wave 1, you will also like wave 2 and the stronger pigmented intense colors will provide you with new options. But will it make me stash away all my contrast and speed paints? Uh, probably not. You see, while well, I've described contrast and speed paint as quite similar in their properties and intensity, Express colors do feel a bit different due to their slightly lower pigmentation. And personally, I would rather dilute my contrast and speed paints when I want more supple results than having to apply two coats of express color when I want a stronger shading. For this reason, I think the intense colors are a welcome addition, but to be honest, I wish the other colors would be more like them. Just my opinion, your mileage may vary. I gave Express Colors an 8.5 in my review of Wave 1, and I stick with the score. Precisely because Express Colors have a somewhat different feel, there are definitely some good reasons to pick them over their competitors. Thanks to their even distribution, you can achieve some very nice results with central highlights and slap chop, and the slightly weaker pigmentation can actually help to bring out the pre-shading better. The extra matte finish is quite nice, and if you're an advanced painter and like to use one coat paints for glazing or as filters for airbrushing, Express Colors do this excellently as they are very stable, do not react to weight and thin down nicely, even with water. Moreover, the Express Color range offers the widest selection of muted and earthy colors, perfect for a more realistic color palette and historical uniforms, which is a unique selling point. And aside from the muted tones, there are some unique colors that I definitely want to keep in my one coat paint collection. For example, Martian Orange, Mummy White, Zombie Flesh, Demonic Skin and Black Lotus, just to name a few. To help you find the perfect shade for your next project, I just updated my huge hand painted one coat paint comparison chart with all colors from Express Colors Wave 2. You can find the chart on my Patreon along with my masterclass tutorials and I also made a similar chart but for acrylic washes. And if you're feeling a bit overwhelmed with all the options and products now, then watch my tier list of all one coat paint brands next, which also includes more niche options like Scale 75's Instant Color. The video is here on the right. Thanks a lot and happy hobbying! <laughs>